Welcome to Code Spider. In this video, we are going to discuss layout view in ASP.NET Core MVC. In this video, we cover what is layout view, why layout view is required in ASP.NET Core MVC, how to create a layout view, how to use layout, and the benefits of layout view. So, let's understand what is layout view. A layout is a .cshtml or you can say the view page that is used to provide common structure to other views. This point is very important so need to analyze again. A layout is a CSHTML page that is used to provide common structure to other views. That means we have created a master view that can be shared with the child view. The layout view is same like the master page in ASP.NET Waveform application. If you are familiar with the ASP.NET Core Waveform application, then you must know that about the master page concept in ASP.NET Waveform. The master page gives the common structure to the corresponding child page. Then understand why layout views is required in ASP.NET Core MVC. The layout view allows to define a common site template which can be inherited in multiple views to provide a consistent look and fill in multiple pages of an application. Nowadays, most of the web application following this format. The application must have a website header and the navigation menu. It may be the left menu or right menu and the website footer and this is the content area where the content of the page is displayed. So let's discuss about that. Why this format is more popular for now. Then let's discuss about if a website does not have a layout page, then what is the exact issue? If you don't have a layout view for our website, then we need to repeat the required HTML for the above mentioned sections in each and every view of our application. And this is the violating the DIY. That means don't try yourself principle as we are repeating the same code in the multiple views. As a result, it is very difficult to maintain the application. For example, if you have to remove or add a menu item from the list of navigation menus or even if you want to change the header or footer of your website, then you need to do this in each and every view which is tedious, time consuming as well as error prone. Rather than having all the sections in each and every view, we can define them in a layout view and then inherit that look and feel in all the views. With layout views, maintaining the consistent look and feel across all the views become much easier as we have only one layout file to modify. If there be any change come, the change will be then immediately reflected across all the views of our entire application. Let's understand more with taking another example. Here you can see, suppose we have an index page with the following HTML. You can see the doc type is HTML and in the HTML tag and the head tag, the meta information and the title is declared. And here we need to add the CSS, whatever CSS is used in our website or application. And in the body tag, there is another section available where we can add the navigation menu like this. And this is the main content area where we can add the content to be displayed in the website like this. And if you have any footer of your website or application, then the HTML should add here. Also, if the website have the JavaScript file or JS file, then you can add this portion. So this is the typical HTML format of our website. Like the index page, suppose we have another page named as about us and in about us, you can see that same HTML code is repetition here. Here also the doc type is HTML and the HTML tag, head tag and in the body tag, the navigation menu is here and we should add the content here of about us, then the footer, then end of the HTML. And also if there is a JavaScript file, here also you can declare. So if you considering these pages, one is index page and in about press space, you can see that there is lot of code repetition. That means the HTML, head, body and the navigation menu and the footer, same thing is repeated in the about us page. Like this, suppose you have 10 or 15 pages, then you should declare like this. That means every time when you create a new page, then we should repeat it the HTML content. So for maintainability for all these things, it's very difficult. Let's take an example. Suppose we have a CSS name as custom.css. The custom.css is repeated on the index.css HTML. Also it added on the about us page. And if there is a contact us page and xyz page. In all pages, we added the custom.css. Suppose on future, there need to rename the static file of custom.css to custom1.css. Then we need to rename the custom1.css to in every phase. Because of our main file has been changed to custom.css and we need to change in every phase. So that's is very tedious for a developer. So to overcome of this, the layout page introduced. The layout page is a master page that we have created for our application and this layout page or master page represent a parent page and all the view page as a child page 
and it can inherit the master page or layout page. Like the regular view in SP.NET Core MVC, the layout view is also a file with .cshtml extension. If you are coming from ASP.NET Waveforms background, you can think the layout view as a master page in ASP.NET Waveforms application. So let's flip to Visual Studio and we will see there how to create a layout page and how to use the layout page in the corresponding views page. So this is our customer management project and till now we have not used the layout page here. So let's first understand in that project where to be create the layout page. Well as the layout views are not specific to any controller, so we usually place the layout views in a subfolder called shared within the views folder. So we need to create a folder named as shared. You can see in the views folder we have created a folder name is shared. As per we discussed, the layout page is a master page that can be shareable among the pages. So in the shared folder, we need to create a layout page. So to creating the layout page, right click, then add new item. Here we need to type as razor. You can see that there is different razor is coming. As we focus on the razor layout, so select on the razor layout. You can see that the default name is underscore layout.cshtml. The leading underscore in the file name indicates these files are not intended to sort directly by the browser and this underscore symbol is a naming convention of the layout.cshtml page. Click it. You can see that now the underscore layout.cshtml has been created under the shared folder. As you can see on the above underscore layout.cshtml contains the standard html, head, title and the body elements. As the above elements are present in the layout file, so you don't have to repeat all the above elements in each and every view. And in the title tag, you can see that there is viewback.title expression is used. For now, we have not go through about the viewback title. So for now, let's make as a static name as customer. Let's management. And in the deep tag, you can find a attribute at the rate render body. So let's discuss about this. Other it render body is the location where the view specific content is injected. For example, if index.cshtml view is rendered using this layout view, the index.cshtml view content is injected at the location where you have render body method call. In ASP.NET Core MVC, it is also possible to create multiple layout files for a single application. That means in the customer management project, we have used multiple layout pages. You may have one layout file for the admin users and another layout file for non-admin users for your application. For example, we can create a layout page for the customers and we can create another layout page for the buyers or the product vendors. So for now, the layout page has been created and we need to inherit the layout page from the index.cshtml page. So open the index.cshtml. You can see that in the index.cshtml, all the HTML elements has been declared. But the layout concept suggests that all the HTML and all the CSS and JS file are to be placed on the layout page and we just inherit the layout page to the content page. So let's see how to do this. So let's copy this and add here. In the layout.cshtml, all the HTML, head and body tag is declared. So there is no need to repeat in the index.cshtml. So let's remove all these things here and remove this as well. Let's run the application and we'll see that the result. You can see that now the index.cshtml content is rendered, but in the layout.cshtml, we have used the bootstrap CSS and here the bootstrap CSS is not working. To confirm this, right click and view page source. You can see that there is no HTML, head, body and the CSS. Only the index.cshtml content is displayed here. Mind that we have created the layout.cshtml, but we have not inherited the layout page in the index.cshtml. So let's see how to do this. To call the layout.cshtml, we just need to type here underscore layout. Run the application. Now you can see the bootstrap is working. Right click, go to the view page source. You can see now all the HTML in the layout.cshtml and in the index.cshtml, everything is rendered. To confirm this, in the body tag of layout.cshtml, let's add a header here. We have added a bootstrap header class here. Let's refresh this and we'll see the result. You can see that now the example page header is displayed perfectly. That means whatever we change in the layout.cshtml, it should be displayed on the index.cshtml. 
let's add a footer in the layout.css table and we'll see that it reflect on the index.css table or not save this reload this you can see that the page header and the page footer is displayed perfectly along with the render body and in the render body whatever in the index.css html this content is display here so according to the index.css html let's add in the about us.css html here the layout by default is null we need to set as underscore layout save this let's remove this all these things and here we need to add as let's add a some bootstrapping here and here we need to navigate home then about us you can see that the layout page header and footer content is display along with the about us html content and another thing is that we can declare the absolute path of layout like you can see that in the index.cs html i can declare view shared and underscore layout.cs html so let's refresh this and we'll see that the layout is working perfectly or not you can see that it working perfectly suppose we make change as layout onecs html and save this and reload this you can see that there is state forward error that means under the view shared layout onecs html could not found either we can declare the absolute path or we can declare simply the name we added the layout page manually so let's see how to add the layout page dynamically so let's create another action method in the home controller right click add view reserve view add the view name is contact us and currently we have not used any template here you can see that a option is use a layout page we have already declared a layout page so we need to check this and here we can see that another option is leave empty if it is set in the reserve view start dot file and currently we have not go through the underscore view start file we may go through on our upcoming videos if there is underscore view start file then it should be empty as we have not underscore view start file so we need to check here we need to expand the views folder because of the underscore layout.css html reside in the shared folder and here we select the layout.css html then click ok you can see that the absolute path is coming tail symbol then views shared and underscore layout.css html let's click add button you can see that the contact us.css html has been created also including the layout absolute path here you can find another property view data of title contact us so for now let's remove this of view data and here you can see that by default there is no html is come because if we have used the layout page let's run the application and we'll see that the contact us page is working perfectly or not let's navigate to home then contact us you can see that it is working perfectly let's make change the text here save this and reload this you can see that the contact us.cs html is also working perfectly let's create another action method let's make as name as feedback right click add view reserve view add let's remove the layout page and we'll see what the result of that feedback page you can see that as we have not selected the layout page then the layout equal to null and all the html has been created this means there is an option you can create a view page with including the layout page or without including a layout page suppose for your website there is a feedback page and that feedback page does not want to inherit the layout page so we can create the page independently and we can do html design here and we can directly run that page so i hope you have now clear picture about the layout view then finally discuss for the benefit of layout in sp.net core mbc first one is centralized design for all pages as we have already seen in our example we have created a one layout page and we use the layout page in the index about us and contact us page so like this we can create a layout page centrally and we can use among all the views also there is facility to create a multiple layout page and according to the user's role we can set the layout view yes it can remove the duplication of code and final one is easy to update the static files that means suppose a scenario when you require the remove some static files or you can rename the static file then you can directly go through the layout page and on that layout page we can rename or we can block that particular css or js file and there is no required to go through the every page and do, do the change 
so i hope you can understand about uh, layout view in sp.net core mbc that's it in the video do like and subscribe for more upcoming videos thanks for watching